in 2009, in partnership with the Metropolitan Council on Jewish Poverty, OHEL Children's Home and Family Services, and the Jewish Board for Family and Children's Services, we created Kol Sedeq, or Voice of Justice, which is a multi-pronged approach to the prosecution of sexual predators. The program encour encourages victims and their families to report these crimes directly to my office and avoid screening by any other authority, religious or otherwise. Kol Sedeq's representatives from my office, including social workers, have attended scores of community meetings in Midwood, Mill Basin, Borough Park, Crown Heights, and Williamsburg to publicly assure victims of sexual abuse that will protect their identities. We established a hotline which allows the victim to reach out for support. Callers are not required to identify themselves, but the assistance they need is offered and their options are discussed with individuals trained to address these issues. To date, we have prosecuted 102 defendants for sexual abuse involving 139 victims. It became clear to us that individuals in these various communities, despite our efforts, were committed to intimidating, threatening, and threatening victims and protecting the perpetrators by means which included coercion or even bribery. And this was done to convince victims not to cooperate with law enforcement. To address that issue, I created a task force which I chair, which consists of senior executives in charge of the Rackets Division, the Sex Crimes and Crimes Against Children Division, uh, our chief investigator and his special investigations unit. And um, uh, I think I skipped Louise Cohen, who's the bureau chief in sex crimes, and Kevin O'Donnell, who's the assistant DA in, in sex crimes. Uh, we also had the, uh, the help of Commissioner Kelly, who uh, assigned uh, Deputy Chief Michael Osgood, who's in charge of the citywide special victims division, to work with us. As a direct result of the work of the task force, whose first meeting was held May 25th, we uncovered evidence that Abraham Rubin attempted to buy the silence of the alleged victim of Nechemach Weberman, as well as her outcry witness. We developed evidence that Rubin offered $500,000 to have the case dropped and encouraged these two witnesses to make themselves unavailable for Weberman's upcoming trial suggesting that they flee the country to avoid testifying. We further discovered that three brothers, Joseph, Jacob, and Herzke Berger, pressured the same outcry witness and victim to withdraw their cooperation in the Weberman case. In an attempt to pressure the witnesses from testifying against Weberman, the defendants first threatened to remove the rabbi-issued kosher certification from the restaurant owned and operated by the outcry witness. When the outcry witness refused to be intimidated, the evidence shows that Jacob Berger went to the restaurant and physically tore down the certificate. Yesterday, a grand jury indicted Abraham Rubin on four counts of bribing a witness, two counts of tampering with a witness in the fourth degree, and coercion in the second degree. If convicted, Rubin faces up to seven years in state prison. The same grand jury in a second indictment has charged Joseph, Jacob, and Herzke Berger with pressuring the outcry witness and the victim to withdraw their cooperation against Weberman. Joseph, Jacob, and Herzke Berger have been indicted for coercion in the second degree, and Joseph Berger has also been charged with aggravated harassment in the second degree. In addition, Jacob Berger has been charged with criminal mischief in the third degree. If convicted, Joseph and Herzke Berger each face a year in jail, while Jacob Berger faces up to four years in state prison. Significantly, this investigation used technological assistance to uncover evidence. These indictments show a clear resolve that we won't intolerate the illegal interference with the administration of justice in this county. Not only will sexual predators be caught and punished, but those who attempt to illegally protect them by witness intimidation will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Chief Osgood. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Deputy Chief Mike Osgood, Commanding Officer of the NYPD Special Victims Division. The NYPD, working jointly with the King County DA's Office, 
is examining a series of cases where we believe there may be victim intimidation um, um, in regards to attempting the victim to withdraw charges on sexual assault cases. As you know, sexual assault cases are some of the most heinous acts um, that can be perpetrated on a person, and, uh, and it's important that all sexual assault victims come forward to us, to us, the district attorney's office, uh, so we can able to um, make those cases um, interdict them, stop the behavior, and of course it's unacceptable for a sexual assault victim to be intimidated, an attempt to intimidation, or to coerce them not to cooperate with us. Okay, thank you. And just to make the point that Chief Osgood made um, to those who watch and listen to this, um, make no mistake about it, these are active investigations that are continuing. 